Hello students, welcome to the course on Hydrology EVE 301 offered to civil engineering students at College of Science and Technology. I am Kirtan Adhikari, faculty at CST. See you in the course. We will continue our discussion on precipitation. In this lecture, we will discuss about frequency analysis of rainfall data. Frequency analysis is a statistical technique applied to observation data or observed data to study probability of occurrence of an event based on frequency distribution of the observed data. While we discuss about the probability of occurrence, a very important term gets associated with it, that is the written period. The answer to the question, when such event is likely to reoccur in the future the answer is the written period so the written period is an average time interval within which an event of given magnitude will be equaled or exceeded at least once so the magnitude of an extreme event is inversely related to its frequency of occurrence which means very severe events occurring less frequently than more moderate events. The objective of frequency analysis is to relate the magnitude of extreme events to their frequency of occurrence through the use of probability distributions. Frequency analysis is defined as the investigation of sample data to estimate the average reoccurrence time period which is also known as written period or the probabilities of occurrence of similar magnitude flood or extreme events it is one of the earliest and most frequent use, uh, frequently used uh, method in hydrology and natural sciences as defined earlier Written period is just an average time in interval, it's average time interval within which a flood is flood of a given magnitude, flood or any extreme event, uh, any hydrological extreme event of given magnitude will be equaled or exceeded at least once. For example, if an event of rainfall of magnitude 500 is 75 years if the return period of 500 mm uh, rainfall is 75 years then it implies that on an average the rainfall of the magnitude equal or greater than 500 mm can occur once in 75 years however it does not mean that it will occur at a regular frequency of 75 years from the date it was observed. The periodicity is not implied. We simply know that it is going to occur once in 75 years, but when will it occur, we do not know. So that is the main purpose of frequency analysis. We simply want to make an estimate on when will similar, similar magnitude will reoccur. What is the average time frame so that we can design our structure? This table shows the relationship of probability. This is uh, probability given by various researchers. And return period and the probability of occurrence is inversely related. In this table, you can see for the first case, California. It was developed for the state for California and the relationship is m by n where m is the rank and n is the number of observation highest rank is given to the highest magnitude event is given the first rank okay if the events are with same magnitude then same rank is given based on the rank and number number of observation probability is calculated thereby we can calculate the written period i highly recommend 
reading this article by Mariul and Benson. It gives an extensive research work carried out on these techniques. With this, let's solve a numerical. The record of annual rainfall at station A covering a period of 20 years is given below. Estimate the annual rainfall with written period of 10 years and 50 years. What would be the probability of an annual rainfall of magnitude equal to or exceeding 100 cm occurring at station A? What is 75% dependable annual rainfall at station A? So we'll be using frequency analysis to answer these questions. So what you need to do is first arrange the rainfall, arrange the rainfall in ascending order or descending order, doesn't matter. But we have to provide rank one for the highest magnitude rainfall. And similarly, the rank last rank will be given to the, the least, that is the least in the list, the first in the list, if you are arranging the data in ascending order. Accordingly, now what you can do is we can calculate the probability based on the formula provided by various researchers. So in point, for this case, I have used Weibull, Hazen, California and so many other formula proposed by so many people. So likewise, once you calculate the probability, return period is just the inverse of probability. And likewise, you can plot a semi log chart on uh, rainfall magnitude on y-axis and time period on the x-axis. In fact, the return period on x-axis and you can simply fit a line that is in since it is a semi-log paper, so we'll get a, a logarithmic equation in terms of logarithm. So here I've given the equation that is magnitude of rainfall is equal to ln t plus 71.86. So likewise, we can convert this t into 1 by p and we have now relationship between the magnitude and the probability. So from this chart, we can answer the questions. So the question was, what was 10 years return period and what is 50 years return period magnitude, right? So at 10 years, we simply go here. So 41, 40 centimeter was, is the 10 years return period magnitude and 50 like Likewise, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So from 50, if the chart is too small here, but we can use the equation to estimate the rainfall magnitude. I simply substitute the value of 50 here and I get the magnitude. Next was 75% dependable yield. So 75% dependable yield, we have to go back to our table and 75% dependable means whose probability is 75. So here, let, let, let us take Weibull for example. So 75 probability 0.75. So we don't have 0.75, but we can interpolate between 0.74 and 0.78. We can interpolate and we can get the value for magnitude. So it's going to lie between 80 and 83. So that's how we make an assumption. With this, there is one research assignment for all of you. Okay, so I have compiled the data set from various stations in Bhutan. So maximum daily rainfall is compiled for 20 years and, and I will be providing you with the data set and you will be answering these questions, answering these questions. As an example, I will solve for one station. So let us take an example of Funzeling. So this is the data set. Okay, so we are on the spreadsheet now. So as you can see, there's the data, one day maximum rainfall data across all the stations in Bhutan. So I'll be analyzing for the station in Funzeling. As you can see in the year 1996, the daily maximum was 195.3 and likewise in 1997 it was 194.5 as you scroll down you can see that one value is missing so we can do an approximation here so based on the value observed at nearby stations we can 
uh, rightly estimate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the value of tendu and samsi and bhur. Although these stations are not uh, really located near to Kunsaling, but they are located in similar meteorological condition. So I'm just making an approximation here. So with this, my data set is complete now. So I'm going to copy this to a new sheet. So I have to paste it as values as I have done some calculations here. So now what I need is I need rank and the probability and the time period or return period. So if you are doing manually, I highly recommend you to arrange these values since Excel provides the inbuilt function of rank. I can simply make use of it and then calculate the rank. So I want the rank of this value among this values. So I just have to be careful with the data. I want this data set to be static. So I have to put the dollar sign between the alphabet and the number here. So I get the rank. Now, likewise, I can calculate the probability. Probability is according to Weibull. If you have remember, it is rank divided by number of observation plus one. So to calculate number of observation, we can use the function count. So I can use the function count. But I want it to be static, so I'm putting dollar sign in between this count plus one. Let me put everything within the parenthesis so that there is no error. So okay, so I have calculated it calculated the rank, also the probability. Now it's time for time period. Time period is just the inverse of probability so here is the time period likewise i can do it for all the values and now the final step is plotting a graph between the time period and the magnitude for this go to insert insert scatter type plot now here you can select the data add a series series name you can name it x values i want this time period and for y values i want the magnitude of the rainfall and then i get a chart now notice that this is a, a normal chart and i want it in the uh, semi-log form so to do this just go here and format axis and then okay so you just make a logarithmic scale now it is 1 10 and 100 and it will be next value will be 1000 goes in logarithmic scale so with this insert a trend line so trend line is going to be your logarithmic because it's a logarithmic data right and along with this along with this you can put the equation on the chart so this is the equation what we are looking for so with the help of this equation, we can answer almost all the questions. So this is it guys. So I hope you got how to solve the problem. With this, the last section of the unit is design storm. Design storm is the storm value, a magnitude that we use for design purpose okay so as a definition design storm is a storm producing a critical depth of rainfall which is considered for design of a structure in terms of its potential of producing flood acceptable for the safety of the structure so there are three ways okay or three types of design storm statistical or frequency based storm 25 year return period 50 years return period based on the frequency analysis we calculate this Probable maximum precipitation. Probable maximum precipitation means it has never occurred, but 
there's a high chance that this can occur due to extreme combination of hydrological and meteorological conditions it has never occurred but there is a likely it is going to be a very very massive value and it will be used to design only very very important structures if it is a hydropower of very large scale or nuclear power plant then we use uh, probable maximum precipitation and there is some uh, there is another reply that is standard storm standard project storm now we do some data analysis from the data we just pick up one value that is that we find it you know, is maximum so if we have a data set of let's say 100 years data set then we can pick just one extreme value and we use that for a design purpose so this is it so there are three types with this i would like to end this unit Thank you.